All right, this lecture is going to be an introduction to the Vi Vim editor. So far in the course, uh, we haven't properly edited a file. We've redirected output to file, and we've explored files with more, less, head, tail, these type of things. But we haven't actually used a proper editor in, in a, uh, to make changes to a file. Uh, so in my opinion, Vi is the Unix editor. Uh, you know, it's the standard. It's found in, uh, ubiquitously across basically every Unix platform. Uh, the original version of Vi was written by a guy named Bill Joy, who you may have heard of because he was the, went on to be the, the founder and CEO of uh, Sun Microsystems. Uh, uh, he, he wrote Vi when he was at, Ber at Berkeley a long time ago, uh, I guess in the 70s, <clears throat> working on a BSD Unix. and. Uh, as I mentioned, it's basically the default editor on all Unix systems. Uh, Vim is just Vi improved, and typically these days, Vim is the, the actual version of Vi or Vim that you find on a machine. So most Unix machines will actually have uh, Vim on it, and it's basically just a bunch of extensions to, uh, to Vi, and it was got written by a guy named Bram Moulinar. Uh, so basically, you know, kind of like Unix and Linux, while technically they aren't the same thing, uh, in casual speak, Vi and Vim are basically used interchangeably. So if I, I, whenever I say Vi or Vim, I, I'm really talking about Vim, uh, the same program. And uh, just to launch Vim from, from the command line, you type Vi and then the file name. If the file name uh, exists, it'll open the current file. Uh, otherwise, it will create a new file called file name. So this is probably quite different than what you're used to in editing a file. Vim actually has three modes. Uh, and uh, it has the normal mode, which uh, is what you actually, uh, I think this is also sometimes called edit mode or editor mode. This is the mode that Vim starts in. And this is uh, the mode where you move around the file, you copy and paste text, you search and replace, or you might run shell commands. Um, I guess actually technically uh, you'd run shell commands from this, but we'll t talk about that later um, uh, from the X or last line mode. Uh, but anyway, the, the other mode is insert mode, and this is probably what you're used to in a text editor. Um, this is where you, you know, use the QWERTY keyboard to enter text, and it sh and appears kind of in a what you see, what you get fashion on the screen. Um, so uh, uh, there's many commands in the no that uh, take you from the normal mode into the insert mode, but there's basically only one command that takes you from the insert mode back to the normal mode, and that's the escape key. So anytime. Any time that you're in um, normal mode and you want, I'm sorry, any time that you're in insert mode and you want to return to normal mode, you hit the escape key. Uh, we'll talk about all the other ways that you enter uh, insert mode from normal mode. And then finally have uh, the EX or the you know, exit or the last line mode. And this is basically where you save the file and exit. Uh, or, as I said, I guess, uh, technically you'd, you'd run sh shell commands from, from this mode as well. So, if you're in uh, normal mode or editor mode and you want to enter insert mode, these are all the ways you would do it. So, a lowercase i uh, inserts text to the left of a cursor or allows you to enter insert mode to the left of where the cursor is. A lowercase a appends text to the right of the cursor and then uh, keeps any existing text moving to the right. And we'll demonstrate this in a second. And then uh, capital I inserts text at the beginning of the line, capital A at the end of the line. Lowercase o opens a line below the current line of the cursor and uppercase o opens a line above the current line. 
uh, replace uh, R. That'll replace a single character under the cursor. And uh, capital R will basically start replacing under the cursor and overwrite all of the text uh, to the right of the cursor on the line. And S uh, replaces a single character under the cursor and stays in insert mode. Uh, so that's different from lowercase r. And that replaces it and then returns to normal mode. And then a capital S replaces a single character and, and all the characters to the end of the line. So basically it deletes the line. All the characters to the right of the cursor, it deletes uh, and, insert, and enters insert mode. So of course uh, it takes some time to remember all these things, but uh, you know, and it may seem clunky at first, but the, the single greatest productivity tool you can have in a Unix environment or programming environment is to learn how to use a proper editor. So eventually you'll find after using these for a while, uh, you remember these commands in a very similar mindless way that you, you know, remember where the placement of the QWERTY keys are on the keyboard. Um, it just becomes kind of natural. So. Uh, as we navigate around the screen from normal mode, uh, it's basically the, the keys that we use to navigate are the keys that are under your fingers on the home row of your right hand. Uh, so H moves to the left, L moves to the right. Uh, Vim supports basically uh, for almost all commands a, a repeat feature. So if you put a number in, in front of a command, whether it's a navigation command or some of the other commands that we're going to learn, it will repeat that. So if you want to move five characters to the left, since L moves a single character to the left, you just simply replace it with 5L and uh, you'd move five characters to the left. Uh, you know, it could be three characters, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, K moves up, so 7K would move seven lines up. J moves down, 10J would move 10 lines down. down. Um, we can also navigate using words, so if we uh, type B That'll move us to the beginning of the word. 4B will move us uh, backwards, uh, four words to the beginning of the word. E moves to the end of the word. W moves to the to the first letter of a word, uh, the next word. 8W would move forward to the beginning of the eighth word. So there's more navigation commands. Uh, zero will take us to the beginning of the line. Uh, or, or uh, you know, uh, the zeroth column. So 30 takes us to, to column 30. Uh, the, the caret symbol, uh, not the control symbol in this case, but uh, the caret symbol moves us to the first word in a line. Uh, dollar sign moves us to the end of the line. 1G will move us to the beginning of a file. 40G would move us to the 40th line. 50G, the 50th line. 62G, the 62nd line. And if we just type G, it'll take us to the end of the line. So I think this is a, a good time to go ahead and demonstrate how we might edit a file using some of these commands. Um, so if we go to the terminal, I'll go ahead and launch a file. Uh, well, first let me, let me show you what we're going to do here. Uh, if you look here I, I, on the left side, uh, there's a bit of a C code here that has some mistakes in it. Uh, on the right side is actually the, the correct uh, C code that we would that we want. You know, this would be something that we could uh, wrap in a main file and compile. Uh, on the right, uh, on the left, if we try to compile this, obviously it would give us errors. Uh, so I'm going to open up a, a version of this that uh, is identical to what's on the left here and show you how you'd use Vim to edit it to produce what's on the right. Okay, so we'll go back here. And, uh, there's our file. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pull uh, this up and leave it there so you can see what we're trying to do. Okay, so, okay, so you can see we're in the file now, and uh, you know, you, you, may, you may be tempted to. The first thing we want to do is correct that first line there to wrap that uh, STDIO with those uh, uh, carrots or the, the greater than less than sign. So uh, 
you might be tempted to just move up there and insert them, but uh, you know the Vi way to do this would be to start by typing 1G to move us to the front first line, type uh, 2W to move us to the second word, then enter insert mode, type uh, that sign, exit insert mode, type capital A to move us to the end of the line, and uh, we, that, that corrects that line, okay? I'm going to type escape again to go back into normal mode. Then we type 2J to move down two lines. Caret to move to the beginning of the line. 3S void. I if I spelled it wrong. And again. Okay. To replace int with void. And then back into normal mode. Then we're going to go down a line to E. That's going to put us on that uh, single quote which we want to replace with a double quote. So there I put R double quote. Then I'm going to move four words to put us on the 10. <clears throat> 2X rids ourselves of the 10. A to enter insert mode after the D. Then I'm going to type the text that we want to put in there and then escape and then left to move back to the single quote replace it with the double quote okay then go to the end of the line capital A place a semicolon there move down and with a J and then the dollar sign puts me on the last letter and then I'm going to enter insert mode type 1 escape open a line below with a lowercase o and close the brace okay and then I would complete this by typing uh, colon X which would write it and close it <clears throat> So I did that rather slowly so that I could record the, uh, the keystrokes and you could see what was going on. Um, but uh, if you notice, every command I type had something that was directly related to uh, editing exactly where I needed to make the edit. Uh, there was no superfluous keystrokes moving around uh, the screen or anything like that. So it takes a while and a bit of practice to really see the full utility here. Um, but again, this is a great productivity enhancer. So if we go back to the slides, um, we can talk about st scrolling. You know, of course, the, the small file I had open there wasn't large enough to need to scroll. But uh, here, you know, if you hit Control F, you'll go forward a full page. If you hit five Control F, you'll go forward five full pages. Control B goes back a full page. Control D down a half page, control U um, up a half page. Um, control L uh, redraws the screen. Occasionally as you're, uh, the buffer can get kind of garbled and if that ever happens just hit control L and you should get a clean screen. Um, so we did a little bit of uh, uh, a few of these commands I already showed you when I was editing that file, but uh, for instance, X will uh, delete a single character under the cursor. Capital X deletes to the left of the cursor. DD will delete an entire line. Uh, so if we delete an entire line or a character, uh, that's stored in a buffer. Uh, you can think of it like a cut command in a Windows environment. And if we want to then paste that somewhere else, we use the P command for put. So the lowercase p puts text to the right of the cursor, the capital P puts it to the left of the cursor. We can also use J to basically remove the new line endings at the end of a line that will join two lines. So if your cursor is on a line and you type capital J, it will join with the line below. So we can also edit text with operators. Uh, we didn't do any of this when I edited that previous file. 
but uh, these are very important, and there are basically three that you need to memorize, D for delete, Y for yank or copy, and C for change. And so the best way uh, to see these is just to kind of uh, walk through a couple examples. So uh, D dollar sign. So these are used in conjunction with other movement commands that we've already seen. So D with a dollar sign will delete from the cursor to the end of the line. Of course, dollar sign means end of line. Uh, DD, since that's a delete a line, well, if we hit 5 DD, that will delete five lines. Uh, if, we, if we type uh, D30G, that will delete um, up to line number 30. Uh, if we type Y dollar sign, that yanks or copies. So D, you can think of like cut from a Windows environment. Y is like copy. So Y yank dollar sign will yank from the cursor to the end of the line. 3YW would yank three words from the current position. Uh, C0, okay, so C basically uh, deletes uh, deletes what you, you know, the, 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 the movement command and then enters insert mode. Uh, so if you type C0, it would change from wherever the cursor is to the beginning of the line. It would essentially uh, replace that. And uh, so 2CW would change two words from the current cursor position. Uh, so copy buffers are used to store multiple yanks. Uh, one, one use for that is it to uh, copy and paste between files. So we can open up a second file if we're already in Vim. We can open up a second file uh, using uh, from uh, normal mode. We would type colon E for edit uh, foo. So that would switch to a file called foo. Uh, we can toggle between two, the previous open file by typing the E hash symbol uh, or control, uh, you know, caret, shift six. Um, so if you want to yank to a buffer and store it, uh, what we would do is type a double quote A Y Y. That would yank the current line into a buffer A. And there are 26 buffers, so A, B, C, basically the letters of the alphabet. So we can yank, uh, you know, and it doesn't have to be the current line. We could, for instance, have, um, say, uh, say B. So we would yank, what, you know, our next command, say, 3 Y W. So that would yank three words into the buffer B. So basically any of the movement commands uh, or operators that or combinations with operators that we've learned previously would work here. Also, uh, by default, the previous nine yanks are automatically stored in buffers one, two, three, four. Uh, and then of course we can paste uh, the buffers by using the P command, so just like before. So maybe a good time to take a look at a couple of the commands that we talked about here. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and open up the actual tech file that, that I used to create the various slides that we're looking at. So uh, just because it's a, it's a longer file. So uh, you can see that the cursor there is on search and replace. So uh, let's go to the very beginning of the file. We can, we can do that by typing 1G. It takes us to the beginning of the file. Okay, you can go to the end of the file by typing G. Okay, it takes us to the end of the file. We can uh, go back in the file, scrolling back by typing Control B. So we just went one page back. And we can go back to the end of the file by typing Control F. So that takes us uh, to the end of the file. So if we'd like to, uh, say, delete a line, um, for instance, how about the line 314 there, uh, we can type DD, that will delete the line. Uh, by the way, you can undo anything by typing lowercase u. So we can type, um, in addition to DD, we could also type uh, D dollar sign, just like we talked about. That would yank from the current position or delete from the current position to the end of the line. 
So instead, this time of undoing it, we'll actually use the paste buffer. So we'll, we'll type P to, to paste it right back. And we could type P again to, to paste it. We can open a line below uh, and, and, and then uh, actually type P there. And we can paste it there. OK. Um, let's move down to a different line to give you a different example. Uh, we'll type uh, the caret to uh, move to the beginning. And this time, instead of uh, actually deleting it and pasting it, we'll just use the yank operator. So we could say uh, yank dollar sign, or y dollar sign. That, that copied this particular line. And then if I move uh, to line 316 and type P, uh, you can see that I paste it there. Okay. So that's kind of a copy and paste um, that we learned there. So let's uh, let's see what else do we have. We talked about. Oh, uh, I guess I can demonstrate the change. So if we uh, if we put the um, the cursor here and we type C one word, uh, you can see it. It's removed the word table and entered into insert mode so that I, now I can type whatever I wanted to else. So that, you know, change one word would be uh, how that works. And then finally, I guess we should uh, show how the, the buffer works. So uh, if I wanted to uh, say store, search, and replace those three words uh, in the buffer B, we would type uh, quote B uh, 3YW, okay? So there I, I made the yank, and now if we go up here, say enter a new line and type BP, then I can paste uh, search and replace back there, okay? So that's a couple of the things we just covered. So another good feature of Vim is the search and replace feature. So uh, we can we can search for patterns and regular expressions. Uh, the easiest uh, thing to do is to simply uh, use the slash command with a pattern, and it'll search forward for that pattern. Uh, the the uh, question mark is just uh, the opposite of that. So it it searches from the the uh, the slash searches from the cursor forward or down the page, down the file, and the quotation mark searches from the, the, the cursor, uh, I'm sorry, the question mark searches from the cursor up the page or up the file. Uh, we can repeat the same search basically by using n, so lowercase n basically repeats in the same direction. So if you use a slash, if, if your initial search was with a slash, N would search, uh, continue to search down the page, uh, lowercase n would. Uh, if it was a, a question mark, then it would search up the page. And the capital N has the opposite effect. Um, so we can then replace uh, things. I give a couple examples there, and uh, I'll show you uh, uh, an example here in just a second. Um, and finally, uh, when we do search, we typically have to specify a range, uh, or I'm sorry, when we do a search and replace, we, we specify a range. Like in this instance, we're going to, you know, we would search between lines N1 and N2 and, and replace S1 with S2. Uh, this is the syntax for doing that. Uh, the percent sign here will basically search the entire buffer for find and uh, replace it with look uh, all instances on a, on a line. So we have to specify a range for doing the search. And uh, we can do it with uh, some special syntax like I've shown here, but we can also do it visually with the, uh, the visual selection commands up here. So you enter that from normal mode with either lowercase v, which begins the highlighting character by char character, or a capital V, which begins the highlighting uh, line by line. So if we go back over here, we can give an example of that. Um, I've, uh, I've got a couple of search and replaces there that I, that I just replaced. So uh, what I'm going to do to specify a range, I'm going to type a capital V 
and this is and this is going to enter me into visual mode you can see it's highlighted there and then I'm going to go down and highlight these three lines and then I'm going to type colon uh, and you, you see the special uh, down at the bottom of the screen you, you see the, the, the special uh, syntax down there that means that the search that I'm about to create uh, is only going to occur within the range that I've highlighted there so here I'm going to search for the word search and I'm going to replace it with foo uh, and you see that that, that actually happened okay um, I can actually uh, in addition search the whole document say for replace in this time okay and replace it with bar and you can see that that was done like that so that's how uh, the search and replace feature works some other useful commands I think I've already talked about is uh, U uh, to undo the last command capital U will undo all changes to a line uh, since the cursor was moved there uh, period repeats the last command uh, you can create abbreviations or shortcuts with uh, the AB command. This is useful if you if you have something that you type re very repetitively. So for an abbreviation, if you have a command that you that you type uh, quite often, you can use the abbreviation command to uh, if you if you go to normal and you type AB, say uh, FB foobar. That's some special command that you use uh, quite often then um, if you type FB you can see it's expanded down there uh, to foobar okay finally the the, the uh, last line or exit mode commands these are basically how you um, would uh, write a file so uh, colon write saves the file but remains in insert mode uh, the colon X uh, closes and writes the file. It's the same as, as the colon write Q command, write quit. Uh, if you specify a new file name, it's kind of similar to the save as feature in a Windows environment, so it creates a new copy of the file. <clears throat> uh, if, if the new file exists, then you uh, you'd need to specify the, uh, the uh, exclamation point operator there. Uh, that means, you know, do it do it no matter if you have to overwrite a file or not. Q quits vim, Q with the exclamation quits without making any changes uh, and uh, you know finally as, the, the, as I mentioned earlier you can run shell commands so to give an example there uh, we could uh, type exclamation point say ls and uh, there you see at the bottom of the command it lists the directory at the bottom of the screen there uh, finally, what I should do here is actually quit this without saving any changes. I made a lot of changes there that were meaningless, so I don't want to save those, so I would type Q exc exclamation point. And now I'm back in the Unix shell. So I'd like to end with just a couple of tips. Uh, nothing will improve your productivity more, as I mentioned, than learning the proper use of an editor. Uh, and part of the proper use of Vim is learning how to move around the screen the, the correct way. So don't use the arrow keys. Uh, learn as fast as you can how to move around the screen without using the arrow keys. So that means using JKLM. Uh, I think you'll find over time that you, you'll, again, this will be very natural movements as you get a lot of practice with it. You can actually turn the arrow keys off by setting some particular settings in your in your vimrc file which is your kind of configuration file we're gonna learn more a lot more about that like how to customize your environment uh, in the next couple of lectures so uh, you know it's kind of along the same lines as the second bullet is you know once you find some specific shortcuts that you like go ahead and, and you know customize your settings add add them to your vimrc file and that'll greatly improve your Productivity and finally, just uh, so you're aware, there are a tremendous amount of kind of open source third-party Vim plugins out there that also uh, kind of have specialized settings or shortcuts to 
or, or work with particular files, uh, formats, Python files or LaTeX files or whatever to do particular things very well and very efficient. So know that they're out there, look for them. Um, if you have a particular type of file that you're coding a lot in, there's probably a plugin that will help you do something easier. Anyway, this was uh, the Vim lecture.